and Augusta is going to take over the patient's portion. So our agenda, some of the things we'll touch on tonight is what is faith, faith versus hope, operating in faith, why is faith important, the power of faith, and faith over fear. So we understand um, faith without patience produces people who start off good, but burn out over time. So patience without faith produces people that constantly suffer, but have no power to change their situations. And so we're going to investigate the biblical evidence for living a life of faith and patience. And these two combined will enable us to inherit the promises. And these are called the power twins. So our first, um, our first scripture that we're going to go to is 2 Corinthians 5.7. Does anybody want to read that? All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And this is an amplified, living our lives in a manner consisting, consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So that's what we are trying to strive for every day to walk um, in faith and um not by sight, because it's easy for us to um, be able to believe in things that we can see in front of our face, but it's much more difficult for us to be able to operate in that trust that we have to put in God. And I think that that's the third part of it. It's, it's faith, it's trust, and it, then patience that he's going to deliver what he said he's going to deliver. Our next scripture is Psalms 37, 7. Does anybody want to read Psalms 37, 7 through 9? I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm just slow. I'm sorry. I'm too like, come on, come on. 37, Psalms 37, 7 through 9. Okay. I'm almost Thank there. you. Uh, 37, 37. Okay. Um, 7 through 9. Okay. Um, it says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Um. Don't worry, worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Uh, verse 8. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. Verse 9. Uh, for the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Thank you. So that's another... Um, good example how God is telling us not to just be not just to have faith but to wait on him and sometimes the waiting that patience part is is harder than having that faith because we know his word says that all you need is um faith of the mustard seed and we know the, the mustard seed is very small so even the smallest amount of faith that you have it in him and his promises can produce fruit. But sometimes we get in our own way by um, counteracting that faith with works of our own, which is not waiting on him. 
which is what's pleasing to the Lord. So we're going to go to Hebrews 11. 1. And this is um, titled The Triumphs of Faith. Now, faith is the assurance, titled deed confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith, comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. And I love this scripture um, because it gives us uh, the definition of what God sees as having faith. And we see the evidence of things not seen. So what goes on in the spirit world is what we have faith for. Hebrews 11.3 by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And faith is the confident assurance that God will do what he said he's gonna do. And faith is a biblical evidence of what we cannot see once again. And faith is perceiving as real what you cannot verify with your senses. So sometimes when we're in, you know, um, tough situations, that's a difficult thing to just be able to trust in the Lord. But we see by these scriptures that by trusting and having faith, um, we're going to be able to have God's promises. And I think um, in this this Hebrew 11, I want to say, I'm going to go ahead and read through it because um, this whole entire chapter, unless somebody wants to read it, but it's it's a, um example of faith over and over again. And I think we can start in four. And it talks about... Um, the different people in the Bible that had faith and how their faith was able to come to um, from the spirit world to the physical world. Does somebody want to start reading 11.4? I can start reading. Okay. And we'll just right. go down to the end, but we can, you can stop whenever you want, but we're going to read to the end. Okay. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever God draw near to God, who for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household by this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith by faith abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going by faith, he went to live in the land of promises, a promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him 
of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she saw past that she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He can Considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and of David and Samuel and the prophets, whom through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, where were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking of flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. All of these, though commended, commended through their faith, 
did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Amen. That was beautiful. You know, one whole chapter with so many stories of how faith prevailed. Absolutely. Um, every single one of the people that we just read about from Abraham to Sarah, um, the walls of Jericho, Isaac, Jacob, um, we could just keep going. They all demonstrated, you know, levels of faith that they were able to receive blessings from our creator um, because they just, they demonstrated faith. Um, does anybody have a story or a um, testimony of faith that they would like to share? It's okay. It's not. Sorry. Um, I, I think that um, for me, like, uh, faith has been a reoccurring theme. Um, I've been definitely trying to uh, increase my faith um, so that I can receive blessings um, and not necessarily get in my own way by it. And I think that's where I have the hardest part is that it's the, the faith and then the patience, the waiting, you know? So making sure that um, I'm praying diligently, um, letting my prayers be heard by God and then, you know, not trying to um, operate in my own will. And so that's where the patience comes in. And I'm sure you guys can all think of examples of how God has acted based on faith that you've had. So what is the difference between faith and hope? Does anybody know the difference between faith and hope? Because they're real, they seem real similar. A lot of times people, when they're speaking, they'll say, oh, I hope this, or I hope that. I've been trying to move away from that that and make sure that um, I speak in faith. Does anybody want to give us the difference between faith and hope? Well, for me, hope is the thing that you are looking forward to come to pass like the actual thing the actual act of it or whatever it is and faith is what you put your it's like what you put into it, it's like where where your source from it where where you look for it from what source you're looking for it from basically is what I would say yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So faith is, I mean, hope is more open-ended. Um, like you're, like you were explaining, it's not really tied to anything. Um, you can be, you can hope different things, you know, it's kind of almost like luck in a way. Um, when people say, oh, you know, good luck or, you know, um, but we know as um, believers that, you know, there is no luck um, so you can hope to be successful in life, um, hope to be healed of a sickness or hope to be promoted at your job, but this is just like wishful thinking. Um, now faith adds substance to hope. Faith must be tied to God's words. And when we tie God's word to what we hope for, then um, we can see what, you know, receive the, the promises um, and the blessings that he's, he has in store for us. Uh, we can go to Numbers 23, verse 19. Uh -huh.
All right, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has, has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good and fulfill it? So God's going to always come through and he's going to make good on his promises. Um, so, um, and we can get those um, promises through reading the word uh, and see what he has in store for us. And we know that if he says it, then it's going to come to pass. Titus 1 verse 2. Does anybody want to read Titus? I'll read it. What what version um are you coming matter. from? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna amplify, but it doesn't matter. Okay. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So how do we typically determine if we're going to put faith or believe what a person says? Like, what do, what do you use to determine if you're going to believe what somebody says or put faith in them? Trust. Okay, past trust. That's a good example. Um, have they done what they said they were going to do in the past before because that's kind of what trust is like you build that right so if they said that they were gonna you know um help you pay you know your rent and they've done that in the past then you have faith um that they're going to do that in the future so that goes on to the person's character and their track record, right? So um, God has a proven track record with us and flawless character. So we don't ever have to worry about if he's gonna come through, if he's gonna make good. Um, he always has, he's never let us down. He's never let anyone down in the past. Um, he will do what he says he's gonna do. So faith is then uh, believing in the word of God. Did you ask a question, Sister Sean? No, I was just um, finishing a thought. I just said faith is believing in the word of God. So we're going to go to Luke 137. Does anybody want to read Luke one thirty seven? I got you. Thank you. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Correct. So that kind of helps us back up the faith, right? Because if we know that God is, is the God of impossibility, he can make the impossible possible, then we can rest assured that whatever we have faith in, that that's what's going to come to fruition. And that little uh, thing on the side, I think it says... Um, faith does not make things easier. It makes them possible. That's Luke 137. So operating in faith, faith gives us substance 
and con and confidence to our thoughts and produces godly images of the expected outcomes. And without faith, we often lose the battle in our minds because of the constant barrage of impure and negative thoughts that we have. Um, but with faith, we're able to extinguish the enemy's darts. And that's Ephesians 6, 16. And let's li listen clearly to God's thoughts, plans, and dreams. And I put that little picture of, um, when I read this one, it reminded me of um, Jesus and Peter walking on water. Um, he had to have faith. As long as he had faith, he was able to complete that. But when he lost, when he took his um, eyes off God and uh, off Jesus and um, succumbed to fear, then it wasn't possible anymore. So as long as we continue to believe in his word, then we can make the impossible possible. Why is faith important? Um, it's impossible to please God apart from faith. And that's what we read in Hebrews um, 11, 6. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Why is faith important? Um, Number one, because we're saved through the vehicle of faith. Um, we're, we're called to live by faith. And to be even clearer, we are instructed to live by our faith. To walk by faith and not by our senses. And to fight the good fight of faith. We are taught that prayer of, you know, faith with prayer can heal the sick. And we're taught that every born again believer can experience uh, overcoming victory and that the victory that overcomes the world is assessed through faith. And then we have the power of faith. Um, oh. I did that twice. All right, faith over fear. It means that nothing is done in the kingdom of God without faith. And God requires faith. Faith moves him. And the absence of faith disappoints him and opens a door for the operation of fear. So faith, however, cancels fear. And we'll go to Psalms 5. <laughs> Sorry, she just learned how to scream. Maybe it's Psalm, that's not the right one. Hold on, let me find it. I don't see the um, scripture I wanted to read, but we'll go on to the next one. And that that is the end of the faith teaching. Does anybody have any questions or any comments? Or I have a question. What does substance mean to you? So substance um, for me is um, the, 
is connected for me is connected to faith um uh in in his works right so knowing that what he says is true um so that's what substance to me is with faith It's the having like an amount of something, you know, so um, an amount of, of faith for me. Am I off mute? Oh my goodness, I've been trying to get off mute. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Good can y'all hear Yes, Good. we can. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank you for taking time to teach this. Faith is something if I'm and I'm with, um, I should, especially as a believer who knows who God is and what God can do and what he's capable of and that he's righteous and his word is esteemed even above his name. So if he says he'd want to do something, then it's going to happen. But as uh, we just learned Monday about the flesh, the beast that is the flesh, sometimes it talks louder than my faith. And so just a reminder, this was just a reminder to me that, you know, it's very important that we have faith because the word says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So strengthening my faith is something that I have been asking God to do. Now, we have to be careful when we ask for certain things because sure enough, he's going to put you in a situation where you are going to need to have faith. So again, I just, I thank you for taking the time to break it down and bring it as a reminder to us how important it is to have faith as believers and, and how, um, you know, how we really need to take a look at ourselves to check our faith because we check everything else. We check our walk, we check this, we check that, but do we check our faith? So good lesson, thank you. And Augusta, you're welcome. Augusta's going to um, talk about the other part of the faith, which is patience. Sister Sean, would you mind explaining? I know Aja said it too, but I just, you know how I am. I'm, I'm, you know, my learning level. So can you just say the difference between faith and hope one more time for me, please? I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Let me see. I forget what, um, what slide it was, but hope is more like, I think it was slide five. Oh, uh, and it has like some scriptures um, attached to it. So hope is more open-ended. Um, hope is not really tied to anything where faith adds the substance to hope um it gives us something uh like we tie faith to god's words and promises thank you so much thank you yeah okay that makes sense hope is not really tied to anything got you thank you thank you no hope is more like you know like almost like luck like you just throwing it out there <laughs> That's that's my um, interpretation of it. If anybody else has one, that's then that's good. That's good because that's why the scripture says that Christ is the anchor of our hope. So be, yeah, that's good. I love the way you said that because that makes it come together. Because yeah, that's just good. Hallelujah. That's good. <laughs> Augusta, are you ready for the patients? 
I'm on my way to Gwen's house right now. She's got my slides. Um, Gwen, can you pull them up on your computer? Yeah, yep, yep. Um, but I have also been trying to get out of saying I hope I'm hopeful and just being, you know, proclaiming what it is that um, um one of my friends, she lost her job. And when I was texting her about, you know, like, I was like, I hope you find a job that's, you know, closer to your house, better pay, you know, more helpful and coworkers and stuff like that. I went back and I erased hope and I was like, I know that you'll find that. Um, Amen. And then for me, this was um, a good timing for me because um, I have to practice pace and Pace. faith and patience right now um so y'all all know pittsburgh is really cold and for some reason our landlord we told him that the heat wasn't working he said that he would send somebody we never saw the guy he said he sent him but we never saw him so at the beginning of january it got really cold like below 20 and of course the pipes froze so we told him that, you know, we can't really operate with no water. Um, and he was like, uh, I, I can't remember what he said, but basically he wasn't helping, you know, being helpful. So we were closed for like a week and a half. It got warm. So we went to go see, you know, if there was a chance for us to try to start defrosting the pipes. Um, and there wasn't. The pipes burst. So it's a big building, three floors. It's a lot of, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of pipes. Not only did the pipes already burst from the uh, boiler that was the heat that wasn't working. Now the pipes for the water, the plumbing, the toilets, the sinks, all those have burst too. So it was crazy. I had to call Duquesne Light, have them cut off the power so that we, we could go in and get our stuff. And we still haven't heard back from him. So it's like, at that point, I was like, you know, God, all I can do is wait on your timing and know that you're going to provide for us and that, you know, everything is going to be okay. So um, basically, we have an opportunity now for another kitchen, which will be in the city of Pittsburgh, which I think will be a lot better. Um, and it's a fraction of the rent. It's only $700 a month. And when the rent does increase, I can't remember the rate of, or the, if it's a year or three years or whatever, but it's only going up 15% or three, three 3%, which is $15. So to go from 700 to $715, it's like <laughs> not a big deal. Um, plus the people that we will be leasing from, we know are a lot more reliable and they have the manpower to, you know, fix whatever is going to need to be fixed. The guy that we were dealing with before, he kept saying, oh, well, I'll give you this guy's number and I'll give you this guy's number. We can't get a hold of these people, you know, or he's, run, you know, burnt the bridge with them. They don't even want to come to help. So the past year has been quite a struggle with that place, but thank God, you know, now we have a better opportunity. So um, I just, you know, like Elder Marie said, I know what God is capable of. So I have not been worried. Um, you know, we both were able to move pretty quickly. You know, another job. Oop. Am I on mute? No, we're listening. Okay. So we were both able to move pretty quickly and get, you know, another job. So, you know, we're just waiting for the new place to be renovated. Um, and we have to find equipment. So, you know, I think Dan is probably getting ready to start stressing about it. But I told him, you know, don't because it's going to work out. Um, there's a couple of things that we can do to try to raise the funds. So I'm going to start working on that. And um, coincidentally, <laughs> I 
I had noticed that he has he he got his mom's Bible when she passed away and he has it in his room. Um I've seen him, you know, open it a couple of times and I guess read the scriptures that she had highlighted. Well, like a week ago I saw it on his nightstand, which was different. And I was like, wow, he must have been, you know, looking for some encouragement again. And then like a few nights ago, I can't remember what he said to me. But I was like, you know, all you can really do is pray. And he was like, well, let's do it. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> um, Amen. I, was so shocked. I was like, what? He was like, well, you can do it because, you know, I'm not really good at that type of thing. So I was like, all right. He was like, well, come on. And he got on his knees and I was like, what? <laughs> So, you know, I got on my knees. Come on now. Come on now. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So I prayed and, you know, he didn't really say anything. He hasn't said anything since. But I'm like, let's, you know, I've been praying for him to, you know, have that, um, that, uh, what's the word, where he wants to seek the Lord and you know he want I want us to be a praying household, you know, with Cameron and everything. So it's coming, um, and I know that it will. You know, so glory, all glory to God. Amen. That is beautiful. Like so many. That's that's such a good story of like faith and patience because your patience and your faith have been tested and you did not fold, you did not bend, you didn't crumble. Um, And not only that, like you being such a strong example of having that Christ-like faith that you were able to um, bring, bring your husband closer to God, you know? So what was originally meant for your downfall is now being brought to God's glory. That's Amen. beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Mm-hmm. Oh, great to hear, Augusta. My God. That's great. Mm-hmm. I, I just want to tell y'all that um my faith and my patience is being tested, maxed out right about now. Everything that could go wrong is going wrong or whatever. And I'm I'm just I'm holding on, but I'm trying to have a better attitude at times. I don't always have a bad attitude, but I'm being tested, maxed out, and I'm over it, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm still holding on because um I had to travel back in history. Um, I got it was Psalms forty. That right here. Um, it's Psalms forty, and I'm gonna just read it to y'all because this is the one. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud in the mirror. He set my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. I, I'm going to just go ahead and, um, no, I'm going to keep going. This is the same um, Psalms 40. Bless is the one who trusts in the Lord and who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. And I'm going to just leave it there. But, um, I got that yesterday and I had actually 
opened my Bible and I read it and I left my Bible open to it. So that's why I was able to just open it back up. Um, but um, when you look back in history, meaning just over all of the things that Christ has came through with, you know, it's, um, I think it's another one in Psalms, but um, it says like, build your rocks up. And, you know, building the rocks up of, of remembrance for all of the times that he's came through. Um, and I'm just building my rocks up. I just started to just brainstorm on things that I that he has done, that he has came to pass, you know, that he has made happen in my life. And um, I am traveling back in time. Um, it's not like it's a long time ago. <laughs> That's the thing, you know, but it's so many things, major things happening at one time. So I'm just being tested, but I'm holding strong and I want all of us to hold strong because um, I say it and I've been saying it, you know, he truly is our, our strong tower and, um, his hand is not changed. It's, it's unchanged. He is the same yesterday as he as he is today. So I just thank and praise the Lord for his mercy and his grace that abounds. Um, and I just want to encourage all of us because well, I'm sure we're all going through our own things. But I just praise the Lord for these ladies on the line. And then just this word coming right on time. And um, my heart is smiling um, to hear you talk about Dan Augusta and, you know, him wanting to pray. And it just is, it's, 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 it, 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 it's constantly a reminder that he hears our prayers. You have no idea. So that just really made my heart smile. So just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Chris, um, for sharing that. And, um, you know, every day we have to put our faith in him and your faith is strong enough to make it through any test um, and turn that test into a testimony and I know it's hard because we don't know the plans that he has for us um, and you're right we're all going through something but we do know that his plans are good and perfect and um, patience your patience and combined with your faith is gonna be able to get you through um and be able to see the other side where, you know, you're able to see the will that he has on your life and how um, everything is going to turn out exactly um, probably better than what you even expected. So he's going to go before you and he's making your path straight. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sean. I appreciate it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Beautiful, y'all, beautiful. Um, I think we, I don't have the slides on Augusta's half, so she's going to finish it next Thursday, um, the other part to this beautiful teaching. But, um, yeah, we thank you guys both for working on this and encouraging us. Man, it's just beautiful. Man, come on now. I, it's just beautiful. I can't even say nothing else. Y'all got anything else?
All right, ladies, well, we thank you for um, gathering together with us tonight to hear the first half of Faith and Patience and um, pray that you return next week and get the lesson on patience. Um, we'll just go ahead and pray out if nobody has anything else. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for allowing us to come together this evening and get the right food at the right time. We thank you for all the sisters on the line, all their households, that you are going ahead of them and you are filling them with faith and patience, Lord, um, that you are working on their behalf to go and make their path straight. And we know that your word says that with our faith that we can move mountains, Lord. So we ask that you fill each one of us with our own measure of faith to get through these trials and these tribulations. And we know that your plans are good for us, that they are perfect. And we just ask that you give us the patience to wait upon you, to not work in our own will, but to give our will up to you, Lord, so that we can see um, your blessings in our lives, Lord. We ask that you uh, forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, Lord, in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's it, ladies. We will see you next Thursday, God willing, and we will go on with patience. Good night. Good night. Good night.